Yep. Yep. That was the one I was hoping for. Yep. Yep, that one is interested. There he hit it on the drop. 25 and three quarter. 24 and a half, another great fish. 27 inches, you bet. Well, welcome back. My name is TJ Erickson, and this video is morning number two from my say up at Sunset Country Outfitters on beautiful Rainy Lake. I will throw all their links in the description below again, their social media, their website. Just a great resort to go up and stay if you're looking to chase trophy, smallmouth, walleyes, pike, awesome fishing within minutes of the resort, and it is incredibly easy to get to. Some of the sequence of my videos got a little messed up because I lost some of that footage on that first morning, but in video one, I show you exactly how I break down some of that mid lake structure. And I do a deep dive into exactly what I'm looking for, how to find some of the spots on the spots to target some of those big walleye. So if you're looking to see some of the locations that I'm fishing, how I'm targeting some of these big fish, make sure you go and check that video out. I'll put that in the description here below. But in today's video, I'm actually talking about one of my absolute favorite bites, and that is using a jig and wrap. And a jig and wrap is my 100% confident bait if I'm going to be targeting some big walleyes. It's an incredibly fun bite. It is frustrating at times, but it is a super effective way to target and catch some of these big walleyes. And this is in no way new to the walleye scene. It's been around for a while, but I still think that is very underutilized because of some of the misconceptions about it. And honestly, a lot of people just don't have a lot of confidence. A lot of my clients, a lot of people that I talk to, they always talk about jigging wraps, but they just say, I just don't know how to use them, don't have a lot of confidence. So in today's video, I'm hoping to give you some tips and some tricks. That way you can become more confident using a jigging wrap and that way the next time you go out that you can go out be successful and hopefully add it to your arsenal because I tell you what it is one of the most effective ways of catching big walleyes. We're going to jump right into some of the fish catches and then I'm going to mix in some of these tips throughout the video so that way you can hopefully get more and more confident using this bait. Yep, that was the one I was hoping for. That was the one I was hoping for. Stay pinned. Stay pinned, buddy. Oh, come on, I saw him going, but I didn't know if he was gonna go on the first crack. Oh, that was the one I was hoping for. What do we got? Good walleye, I think. Good walleye, it looks like. Oh yeah, oh, it's not that big. Thought it was a lot bigger. Oh, we got 25 and three quarter. Nice fish right there. A lot of these mid to upper 20s on these reefs, but you gotta work hard for them. And man, is it fun when you finally get a few to stick. All right, so tip number one, we're gonna talk all about the setup that I use. And I've tried a lot of different things and what I've kind of settled on for my number one jig and wrap rod, reel, line, everything is right here. It is a seven foot medium light. This is a Rosemore Outdoor Gear Rod. It is an absolute perfect setup when you're using a jig and wrap with braid. Sometimes I will use the seven foot medium a little bit stiffer if I'm using it with mono, but I prefer to use these jig and wraps with braid and I'll talk about that in a little bit. But this seven foot medium light Rosemore Outdoor Gear, it's called the Double L. This is a perfect rod for this technique. And I pair that with the PC Fun Carbon X2 2000. This reel has a phenomenal drag. It is super smooth. And when you are fighting some of these fish, when you have some of these bigger fish on specifically, and they're taking some of these runs as they get close to the boat, you want a very smooth drag so that way they can take those runs 
but it's not gonna be jumpy, kind of jumping on that reel, and so that way you lose some of these fish. So that is the reel that I use, and I like to use a high-vis line. Um, I like to use a 10-pound braid in that high-vis, and the reason I like the high-vis is because you can actually see that line jump. One of the things you notice if you use jigging wraps, these fish hit it on the drop a lot. So you see that bait falling, and every once in a while, I'll see that line jump, and with that high-vis line, it's much easier to see. And you can also see when it hits bottom easier sometimes. So um, I like 10 pound, this is I believe some 10 pound suffix 832 advance. I've also really come to like this J braid grand and they have some in this lighter blue that is also a very good color. This one is more of a neon green. Any of that high vis line that you can use to be able to get some of that contrast from either the sky or from the water, being able to pick up on some of these line twitches or line jumps when you're using these baits. From there, I have a barrel swivel tied on and that is tied on to a either 10 pound or 12 pound fluorocarbon leader to my number seven. That's the size that I like the most, especially this time of year. Later in the year, I will jump up to a size nine, uh, but a number seven jig and wrap. This perch color is my absolute favorite color. 90%, maybe not 90%, but a significant amount of what I own in jig and wraps is in that perch color. I also like the crayfish color or some of those white colors. Just depending on the body of water, depending on the time of year, <clears throat> I use a variety of different colors, but that perch has far and away been my favorite. So that is tip number one, is having the correct setup for a jig and wrap. And this setup, I've tried a lot of different things, and this has easily been the most effective to keeping fish pinned and not having them pop off because that can happen so easily with these jig and wraps. So we'll jump right back into some fish catches and then we'll get on to tip number two. Well, I uh, just moved the camera a little bit, it's starting to rain. So I'm gonna throw on the rain suit here. This is the new Norfin um, Rebel Pro, and this thing is just awesome. 85 out there, didn't quite make it. Maybe taking a look. There's some smaller ones there too. Yep. I don't know if this is one of the bigger ones or one of the small. Feels big. Feels big. Feels big. Come on. Oh, be a big walleye. Saw so just a glimpse. Looks like a big walleye. Oh, yeah, it's a big walleye. Oh, there we go. It's nice being able to get these fish off in the net oh, in order to give them a little extra time and keep them out of the water as short as possible. Let's see what we got. 26. Again, another great fish. I'm probably going to have to duck down a little bit. Thick fish. If I was uh, anywhere else, I would just be tickled with this thing, but 26 inches. Another solid fish uh, looking for even bigger though because they are definitely in here we're gonna let this guy go all right moving on to tip number two and that is talking all about the cadence that is one of the things that i think people struggle with the most about the jig and wrap is not knowing how to work the bait because it is very very different and there's a lot of different ways to do it but what i have found to be the most effective is really giving it a hard snap you snap up almost like you're setting the hook because as you can see with these fins on this bait it really darts around all over the place and it can trigger that reaction in these walleyes so what i like to do is i will cast it out let it free fall to bottom because honestly a lot of times and actually in my last video you saw that these fish will attack it on the drop they see that bait free falling and they just react but once i am casting it out and once it does hit bottom then i reel down and i give a nice hard rip it's almost like you're setting the hook sometimes i like to let it free fall without any weight on the line because they want that hard drop but honestly my favorite thing is to do that hard snap up then I actually reel down just a tiny bit and just put the lightest of pressure on the line because between being able to see that line with the high vis, but also being able to feel that with a really sensitive rod, like this Rosemore Outdoor Gear rod, that is where you can find a lot of these bites on the fall. So you can actually see them or you can feel them. And when you do that, it just sets you up a little bit better to be prepared to set the hook onto these fish. You'll notice that a lot. Sometimes I'll say in my videos, I'll be ripping it and I'll say, hit it on the drop, and then I'll reel down and set the hook. Sometimes that's from feeling it, sometimes that's from seeing it. Then I let it hit bottom. That's a lot of times also when they trap it, they'll either hit it on the fall or trap it to bottom. So when you rip up, it's gonna be there. You kind of have to double clutch. That's where it's nice to have a nice rod to be able to keep that fish pinned when you have to double pump like that. Uh, but being able to rip, let it fall, hit bottom, 
rip, let it fall, hit bottom. And I oftentimes set my drag just so it starts to peel out a little bit when I give those hard rips. There are times where I'll give smaller little pumps or a little bit slower pumps, um, but 90% of the time what I'm doing is giving a hard rip, letting it fall. You know, that bait is moving five, six, seven, eight feet, then falling down to bottom. Because as you see in these videos, some of these fish are pretty high. You know, you think about walleyes being close to bottom. But with a live scope, you see some of these fish are five, six, seven, eight, ten 10 feet off bottom. So when you give that rip, that's where it gets in front of those fish's face again and drops back down. So that is how I like to work these baits. And that is tip number two. Now back to some fish catches. Should be right on the back side of them here. That one darted down for it. There's two there though. Oh, kind of coming back. One coming from the other side. Might be interested. Yep, that one was interested. You bet. Did I press record on all the cameras? Yep. Not as big. Not as big. But a decent fish. So I guess there's a few little bit smaller ones. There we go. Not quite as big, but there are some bigger ones down there. Not sure which one this was, where it came from, uh, but still fun to get a few bites here. Tell you what though, I am absolutely loving this rain suit. It is warm and it's dry. I wore it a little bit yesterday when we were out and raining hard for a little bit. Got home, got back to the cabin, took it off and everything underneath was dry. It is just awesome. You can see how just the water kind of sits on top a little bit more. You know, some of them soak in so much. So when you sit down and you kneel down, then it kind of soaks through when you have water on your pants or wherever. This one, it doesn't seem to soak in as much, which is just awesome. Um, when you're out fishing and obviously you start feeling wet underneath, that can make for a pretty short day. All right, moving on to tip number three, and this is something that I'm continually experimenting with, and that is how you keep these fish pinned. If you've ever watched any of my videos or a lot of jig and wrap videos, you've seen a lot of people lose a lot of fish, including myself, on jig and wraps. And I have tried a ton of different things. I'll talk about some of the mods that you can do to jig and wraps later that can potentially help, um, but I've tried mono, and honestly, what I've kind of settled on is keeping this braided line. Sometimes the mono, it will help to fight these fish because it has that little bit more stretch. Um, but one of the things I noticed is I have worse hookups. So I'm actually getting hooked up less. I can't feel the bites quite as good and it's not having the same action. So while mono can help alleviate some of those fish getting off, one of the things that I've really started to do, and actually in this video, in these three mornings of fishing, I did not lose one fish once I actually had it pinned. Every once in a while I'd have them bite and it would pop off pretty quickly but not once I had it pinned or lose it boat side. And one of the things that I started to do more recently is actually try to not necessarily horse these fish in, but really keep good, consistent pressure on these fish. Sometimes I would loosen my drag. And one thing that I noticed when I did loosen my drag or when I would let these fish go a little bit easier, that's when those fish would pop off. You need to keep consistent pressure on these fish to keep that jig and wrap pinned in their mouth. As you've noticed, and it actually happened in multiple of these fish today, once you get these fish in the net, they have a little bit of that pressure off of the jig and wrap, it pops out. You see that fish hanging in the net and you see the jig and wrap sitting there. So being able to keep consistent pressure, again, not necessarily horsing it in, but still giving some good pressure, keeping these fish on and keeping that pressure on that jig and wrap has been what I have found to keep these fish pinned the best. Again, no matter what, with these jig and wrap, with these hard baits, with some of these mods that you can do, you're still gonna lose some of these fish. Um, but I have had a much, much higher consistently catch rate and getting them in the net when I've been able to keep consistent pressure like that. So that is tip number three. Back to some more fish catching and we'll be back for tip number four. Kind of look like suckers, but... Ah! One was a walleye at least. Hit it on the drop. Another one following it. There, hit it on the drop. You bet. Again, not a big one. Eh, maybe getting a little bigger. No, not that big. Oh. Another okay fish. Not the bigs we're looking for. So yeah, glad we're getting a few to go here, but it would be nice to get some of those big ones. We got a, just a small group right behind. Might be some more of those. 
same class size of fish here. These ones aren't really even looking, so. There we go. Ooh, that's a better fish. That's a better fish. I think either that or just took it and ran. Or might be snagged. Well, it's both. It's a good sized fish, but it's snagged. Still getting closer to the caliber of fish we're looking for. Another fat 26 incher. Again, would have loved to uh, say I mouth hooked this one, but snagged it. I don't know how you can see that. Right there. Made for a fun fight, and I probably could have played it off like I didn't snag it, but it's uh, better to be honest than good, I guess. I don't know if that actually made any sense. Usually it's better to be lucky than good, but still fun fish to catch and still the caliber of fish that we're looking for even. All right, moving on to tip number four, and this is something that is talked a lot about in a lot of different videos, and that is just some of the different mods that you can do. And I have tried just about everything because I've been so frustrated with losing some of these fish. Um, but actually in this video, the jig and wrap that I was using, I didn't lose one fish on, was just the standard jig and wrap. Didn't have any mods to it at all. But I'll actually work you through a few of these mods that I've tried and actually had a little bit of success with, some more than others. Um, but I'm gonna walk you through some of those right now. One of the mods that I have actually found the most success with is just simply adding an extra O-ring like this. And again, it doesn't change it a whole lot, but just having a little bit more spin to that will sometimes help it to stay pinned and not be the fish be able to use that to kind of get some leverage and lodge it out. This one's actually on the Jig and Shadow Wrap and you can see they made it standard on all their Jig and Shadow Wraps um, and that is for good reason because it really does help to keep some of those fish pinned just having that little bit of spin. Another one that I have tried, some people swear by, I have not had quite as good a success with, and that is using just a, switching up the treble hook to a single hook. This one I just have right to um, the bottom there, but again, you can use a swivel, you can use another O-ring, um, but that, some people have said that that is their way of being able to keep these fish pin. Again, I have not had that same experience, but that is just another option that you can try. Another option is using some sort of swivel. This one hangs the hook down a little bit more. I feel like it changes the action just a little bit, but this kind of um, fixes that solution of those fish using that treble hook, using this hard bait to get some leverage and pop this bait out. So it can spin freely if they get hooked on that one. So I have found that when I hook fish up with this, it does stay pinned pretty well, but I do think that I get a few less hookups with this setup um, just because of the action of it. Another one, and this one actually doesn't have the fin on it, but another thing that I've tried is just simply upsizing the treble hook. And this can be pretty effective as well. Um, again, I feel like I maybe get a little bit less hookups, but sometimes that has been a very effective technique is just simply upsizing those treble hooks as well. And one that I actually don't have tied up here, but one that I have used a decent amount, especially when I'm just trying to get a little extra flash or fishing a little bit murkier water. And that is using the hybrid bladed treble, I believe it's by VMC. That just has a little more spin. Sometimes that's a little bit bigger hook as well. Um, they aren't cheap. And honestly, I've had a few that have broken, so I haven't used those quite as much because jig and wraps aren't cheap the way they are. And then adding that, uh, if you lose one or if one breaks, uh, that is a pretty good hit to the bank account right there if you go through a few of those. So those are a few of the mods that I have found success with, um, some more than others. Like I said, this last trip, honestly, in this video, all these fish were just caught on the base jig and wrap, but those are all things that you can try to help increase some of that hookup percentage, but also keeping these fish pinned. Well, back to some more fish catching, and then we will be back with our last couple tips. Yep. Oh, maybe there is some walleyes mixed in here. There oftentimes is walleyes mixed in with these suckers. Seems like a decent fish too. And this one I don't think I'm snagged because it's fighting like it's mouth hooked and it bit. Like it actually bit. I'd like to get a glimpse and see what you are. You bet. Another 
Beauty. Oh, it's got that jigging wrap in its mouth. This one might be the biggest of the day here. 27 inches. You bet. Some nice quality fish coming out of this lake. One followed, second followed. There you bit. There you bit. Doesn't feel giant. There's a few of them down there. Decent fish. A little skinnier. Actually, this is not too bad. 24 and a half. I'm gonna show this side because it's got those big cuts. 24 and a half. Another solid fish. There's just lots in these mid-20s. You can see that one got gashed up by something. I would love to catch whatever gash that one up. All right, tip number five is really just talking about when to use jig and wraps. I like to use jig and wraps in a couple different scenarios. One is the scenario that you're seeing in this video, and that's when I'm targeting some of these single bigger fish. I'm not worried about spooking groups because I'm targeting one fish or maybe a couple different fish trying to trigger these bigger fish to bite. That is a very effective technique. Um, one of the things that you'll notice if you get on a school of fish, maybe they're a school of eaters, and you rip a jig and wrap through, you might get bit by one or two fish, but it oftentimes can spook that school. So I'll use it either targeting a single big fish kind of out on some deeper water or some of this structure like this, or the other thing that I will use it is kind of my last um, resort when I'm on a group of fish, I'll use some more finesse tactics. So say I'm on a school of eater sized fish, I'll maybe use a drop shot, slip bobber, jig, jig and minnow, whatever it might be. And then before I leave, I might try to finish this group of fish off with a jig and wrap because it might spook them, but I might be able to trigger one or two more bites that I wouldn't have had with any of these finesse techniques because they're just looking for a reaction style bait. So those are a couple of the situations where I like to use the jig and wraps. Obviously there's a few more, but those are my two favorites. And we're gonna jump right into tip number six. And tip number six is simply just don't give up. A lot of people have tried to jig and wrap just a little bit, they don't have success with it, or they lose a fish, whatever it is, don't give up on this because I guarantee if you finally build some confidence in this, you are going to catch a lot more fish and a lot bigger fish. And another thing is just like any new bait, don't go try it when everything else isn't working. Now, this can be effective, and that's one of the times when I use jigging wraps is when I can't get these fish to bite on anything else. I will trigger them with this reaction style bite. But whenever you're building up confidence, it goes for any bait, not just the jigging wrap. Find a bite that you have a little bit of confidence in, that you know fish are at, a location where fish are at, and you know that they are maybe biting a little bit, and try it. Build up that confidence, feel that bite, feel when they're hitting on the drop, and how you can keep these fish pinned. Bottom line is just don't give up. Try to build some confidence in it, because once you do, I guarantee it will just broaden your horizons to be able to catch more fish. Well, there you have it. A bunch of tips, a bunch of good fish caught on the jig and wrap. Make sure you stick around for this last video. This last video I have is really cool. I'm going to be talking about how I kind of target some of the bigger fish in the lake and a couple different techniques, some of the things that I'm looking for, and how I use my live scope to do that specifically. We got some big fish being caught in the next one and some really cool bites. So make sure you stick around for that one. As always, appreciate the support. Thanks so much. We'll see you in the next video.